Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 21st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to continue talking about potential responses to human caused climate change. And for the first segment, we talked about the most certain, most effective responses, which is cutting human-based carbon emissions, primarily by cutting fossil fuel burning and working to manage lands in such a way that the biosphere has enhanced carbon reduction properties. The number one being cutting human-based carbon dioxide emissions and fossil fuel burning, which are the primary drivers of the problem. For the second segment, we talked about a less certain approach, presently a higher cost approach that involves direct carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere, but a process that we might have to try given the fact that if the earth warms by, by only a bit more, we might start tipping into places where, where systems such as the boreal forest, the permafrost, the equatorial rainforests, and the ocean turn from carbon sinks into carbon sources, lending urgency to the fact that we really, really need to cut fossil fuel burning as rapidly as possible. But moving on from more certain approaches to climate change, such as cutting fossil fuel burning and carbon emissions to zero and moving to net zero by managing lands and potentially through other means. I'd like to talk about some of the more potentially dangerous responses to human caused climate change. Responses that in my opinion are generally a bad idea. And that would involve solar radiation management. Now the most accepted or our tested form and not actually very well tested form of solar radiation management would be in, would be involved through injecting particles of sulfur dioxide or other reflective particles into the earth's atmosphere to reflect sunlight away from the earth in much the same way that a volcanic eruption reflects sunlight away from the earth gen generating a period of temporary cooling by injecting reflective particles into the upper atmosphere. Now, observation by science of periods of time following volcanic eruptions provide a number of concerns to this approach. The first is that one, sulfur dioxide generates a, a very rapid shift in temperature for the Earth's surface and this hard swing can produce negative consequences. Primarily, one of the things that has been noted by science following volcanic eruptions is that the productivity of, of growing in various regions of the world is greatly reduced. So there's a negative impact to agriculture. The other thing that, uh, that appears to happen following volcanic eruptions is that drought tends to expand through numerous regions, particularly in places like Africa. And this hard swing in temperature does have a number of negative weather and extreme weather-based impacts. In addition, there are differences between the proposed method of solar radiation management and volcanic eruptions. Now, the Proposed method for solar radiation management would involve the constant injection of sulfur dioxide into a higher level of the atmosphere. And this injection of sulfur dioxide is likely to have a negative impact on the ozone layer because sulfur dioxide is a ozone eroding chemical compound. In addition, it's worth noting that the sulfur dioxide tends to get flushed out toward the poles and, and to rain out in, in enhanced acidic rainfall events. And these also tend to 
hit the upper, upper atmosphere of ozone rather hard in those regions. According to various paleoclimate studies, it's also worth noting that the time period of, I'm sorry, in which the Earth experienced the greatest mass extinction event, the Permian extinction, involved massive volcanic eruptions that periodically both warmed and cooled the Earth. And the net effect was a massive hothouse event. But this periodic swing between much warmer than normal to, to much cooler conditions is thought to have had a negative impact on the Earth system because plants and animals were unable to adapt to these hard swings in temperature through a, the longer term, term, term warming process that eventually hit some, some extraordinary temperature spikes in the end. So it's completely uncertain that the net effect of injecting sulfur dioxide particles into the upper atmosphere would be positive, and there are some very high risks for negative consequences. And I'd like to call your attention to a quote from a recent article on the subject from the Washington Post entitled, This Climate Change Hack Would Reflect More Sunlight. Not Such a Bright Idea, Study Says. And one of the study authors notes, I'm just going to read this quote from the end. It's just barking mad, Pierre Humbert said. It's just a lunatic idea to think that this is a good thing to have in our portfolio of res responses to global warming. A better idea, said Alan Roback, a climate scientist at Rutgers University, is to stop pumping, pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We all know the solution, the solution to global warming is stop using the atmosphere as a sewer for our greenhouse gases. So something to think about as we consider what our responses to human-caused climate change will be. The set of responses that are most positive and produce the most positive benefit are transitioning to clean energy and cutting fossil fuel burning as rapidly as possible while looking to better manage the global environment, primarily forests and farms, in such a way that atmospheric carbon is drawn down over the longer term in a steady scale. The less certain responses, but still potentially positive responses, may include some atmospheric carbon drawdown techniques in addition to that. But unfortunately, managing solar radiation appears to be very risky, very dangerous. So we should focus primarily on the responses that produce the most positive impact and have the most certainty for positive effect. And that is rapidly reducing carbon dioxide through cuts in fossil fuel burning and a clean energy transition and looking for better ways to enhance the natural carbon sinks of the earth itself. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.